Hello my precious friends, I really hope that you are doing great. Welcome to our today's class. It is our third lesson on the 10th topic of Form 4 which is called Radioactivity. As usual, let me commence by giving the quote of the day which states that competition against others creates bitterness but competition against yourself creates better men. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So today we are looking at radiation detectors and the first type of radiation detector is what we call a photographic emulsion. So we are saying that all radiations, that is the alpha particle, beta particle and also the gamma rays, they usually blacken or darken a photographic plate or what we call a photographic film. So photographic films are very useful to workers who handle radioactive materials. So these workers are usually given some special badges which contain small pieces of unexposed photographic films so that if the workers are exposed to these radiations then the photographic film on their badges will actually blacken or darken indicating or implying that further safety precautions should be taken in order to safeguard the workers against harmful radiation such as the uh, gamma rays. Then the second uh, type of radiation detector is what we call the leaf electroscope. So radiations emitted by a uh, radioactive material usually cause ionization in the air. Remember ionization is simply charging the air such that some particles of air will be charged positively whereas others will be charged negatively of course to form electrons. So when placed close to a charged electroscope the electroscope is discharged due to neutralization. So remember, when you bring this particular ionized air to the brass cap of a charged electroscope, for example, suppose the electroscope was positively charged, if you bring ionized air to the brass cap of a positively charged electroscope, then the ion, that is the electrons within the ionized air, are going to attract the positive charges on a positively charged electroscope. Once the positive charges are attracted they are going to be neutralized uh, by the negative charges within uh, the ionized air therefore we expect um, uh, the neutralization process of course to reduce the charges on an electroscope therefore the expected observation is that there will be a reduction in the divergence of uh, the leaf electroscope similarly if you bring ionized air to the brass cap of a negatively charged electroscope the same observation will be made because the positive charges within the ionized air are going to attract the negative charges on a negatively charged electroscope. When the negative charges are, are attracted, they are going to be neutralized by the positive charges within the ionized uh, air. Then when the negative charges are, of course, are neutralized, that means that um, the electroscope will be losing some charges due to that process of neutralization. Therefore, we expect a reduction in the divergence of the leaf of that particular electroscope. So this method is most is more suitable for only alpha particles, and the reason is because uh, that alpha particles uh, they cause more ionization. Remember when we when we were looking at the properties of alpha particles, we said that they are usually heavy and therefore slow moving. So the heavier and the slower they move, the more ionization they cause. So of course, if they cause more ionization, then it simply means that the leaf electroscope will be uh, effective. Uh, uh, for this particular method that is whenever you're using alpha particles because the alpha will cause more ionization of the air uh, molecules hence there will be an observation on the leaf of that particular electroscope but the main disadvantage of this method is that it is not suitable for beta and gamma radiations the reason is because they have low ionizing power remember we said that um, beta and gamma rays they are usually very light or they, are, they have very low density, therefore they move at a very high speed. Therefore, their time of interacting with air molecules in order to ionize them is very, very little. So it's because they have low ionizing power, therefore they won't be easily detected by a leaf electroscope, which depends on the neutralization of its charges in order uh, to detect a reduction in the leaf divergence. Then... Uh, uh, the third uh, type of radiation detector is what we call the expansion cloud chamber. So this is what we are calling the expansion cloud chamber. So some of its features, of course, it have 
uh, or it has a radioactive uh, source which produces the alpha, the beta, and of course the gamma rays. Then of course we have saturated alcohol or simply the water vapor that is placed within this uh, chamber. Then of course we also have a glass. Uh, then we have some dark screen where of course the uh, foam, dark tracks will be displayed. Then of course we have a piston. So when a radioactive element emits radiation into the chamber, that is when alpha, beta or uh, gamma rays are emitted into the chamber, then the air inside is actually ionized. So the air inside here will be ionized such that some part of the air molecules will be positively charged, whereas others will be negatively charged. So if the piston is now moved down suddenly, air in the chamber will actually expand and cooling occurs. Remember from Boyle's law, whereby uh, we were talking of the volume of, uh, that is, that whenever you are dealing with a fixed mass of a gas, then if you increase the volume, then we expect the pressure to actually reduce. So what is happening here is that if the piston is moved down suddenly, remember when you move this piston uh, downward, you are actually increasing the volume or the amount of space within this particular chamber. Therefore, the air inside, which of course has been charged or ionized, is going to expand. So, of course, when it expands, it actually expansion is accompanied by uh, cooling because expansion simply means that uh, the pressure has actually reduced. And remember also from pressure law that pressure is directly proportional to the absolute temperature. So, uh, the lower the pressure, the lower the, the temperature, therefore, the higher the cooling rate. So if the piston is moved down suddenly, air in the chamber will expand and cooling occurs. Then when this happens, the ions formed acts as nuclei on which the saturated alcohol or the water vapor contains forming a tracks. Of course, we are going to have tracks of different shapes depending on the type of radiation that has been uh, that led to the formation of those particular tracks. Next. We look at the fourth type of radiation detector, which is called the diffusion cloud chamber. So this is what we are calling our diffusion cloud chamber. So it consists of two compartments. One, we have what we call the lower compartment. Then it also has the upper compartment. So let's start by discussing uh, the functions of the components of the lower compartment of a diffusion cloud chamber. So the lower compartment consists of a leveling wedge. Then it also has a removable base. The lower compartment also consists of a sponge whose function is simply to hold the dry ice in position so that it can perform its functions effectively. So remember the dry ice is usually at negative 78 degrees Celsius. The other name for dry ice is what we call the solid carbon dioxide. So what is the role or what is the function of dry ice or the solid carbon dioxide in the lower compartment of a diffusion cloud chamber? So the function of dry ice or the purpose of dry ice or the solid carb carbon uh, dioxide is simply to cool the alcohol vapor below the condensation temperature. Then we discuss the functions of the components of the upper compartment of a diffusion cloud chamber. The first component is what we call the radioactive source. Its function is simply uh, to produce the radiations. That is the alpha particle, the beta particle, and of course the gamma rays. So it is also worthwhile knowing that the upper compartment usually consists of air at room temperature. So we have air here such that when we have uh, the radiations which are emanating from the radioactive source, when they get in contact with air uh, molecules, actually the air is, is going to get uh, to be ionized such that it produces both the positive ions and the negative ions of that particular uh, air. Then of course we have another component here which is uh, called the felt ring soaked in alcohol so what is the purpose of alcohol in the upper compartment of this particular diffusion cloud chamber so the purpose of alcohol is simply to produce alcohol vapor which condenses on air ions to show trails of radiation path or what we are, call we are calling the uh, tracks so the purpose of the alcohol is simply to give us the alcohol vapor because remember in some times we can also use what we call the water vapor uh, but specifically the purpose of alcohol in this case is to produce the alcohol, alcohol vapor which condenses on air ions to show trails of radiation path then you also have what we are calling the perspex lead so it is usually transparent 
to allow easy visibility of the tracks that have been formed in the upper compartment of this particular diffusion cloud chamber. Then we also have what we are calling the black uh, velvet chamber floor. Then we also have some light source, of course, which illuminates the inner part of this particular uh, upper compartment to ensure that the tracks that have been formed are actually clearly uh, visible. So those are the functions of the components of a diffusion cloud chamber. So air inside the chamber is ionized by the radiation in its path. Of course, this particular source of uh, radioactive material, uh, when the air that is inside this upper a chamber gets in contact with these radiations that is the the alpha the beta and the gamma rays that air gets ionized such that it produces both the positive and the negative ions so the ionized uh, air inside the chamber is ionized by the radiation in it, its path then this leads to the formation of air ions because remember we have alcohol which is coming to condense so alcohol vapor condenses on these air ions forming droplets along the uh, path so these droplets, these are what we are calling uh, the tracks. Then these droplets or tracks are visible and so the radiation is detected by uh, the pattern it forms. So it is, they are visible because we have some light source which helps us uh, to make to illuminate light on it so that they can be easily visible. Then of course we have the uh, transparent, a uh, perspex lid which allows visibility into the upper compartment of this particular diffusion uh, cloud chamber. So the observations made are uh, alpha particles produce short, straight, and thick tracks. So you can see these are the short, straight, and thick tracks. So this is because, one, alpha particles cause heavy ionization, uh, therefore rapidly losing energy. So this accounts for the short range. So you can be asked to give a reason why uh, alpha particles uh, forms a short range uh, tracks. So the reason is because uh, alpha particles, they cause heavy ionization, uh, leading to rapid losing of energy. Therefore, they cannot move to uh, a very longer distance. So we say that they are heavy because they are usually more denser. Therefore, they move slower. Then alpha particles are massive. That is, they have a larger mass or density and therefore uh, their path cannot be changed by air molecules. Hence, they are straight tracks. So you can see the tracks of alpha particles are very straight. Uh, they are very linear, that is they are straight. The reason is because alpha particles are massive and their path cannot be changed by air molecules. Therefore, they continue in uh, their path that they originated uh, as they originated from the radioactive source. Then alpha particles cause more ions on their uh, path as they knock off more electrons, hence producing thick tracks. Yeah, the tracks of alpha particles are thick because of uh, they cause more ionization or they have a higher ionizing power as compared to other types of radiations. Next, we look at tracks formed by beta particles whereby we are saying that tracks formed by beta particles are generally thin and irregular in direction as compared to those of alpha particles. So we saw that for the case of alpha particles, their tracks were very are thick and of course they were regular in direction or they were moving in a straight line if you compare that to uh, these tracks of uh, beta particles you can see that the ones for the beta particles they are somehow thin as compared to those of uh, alpha particles and of course they are irregular or they are somehow zigzag because they are not moving in a straight line or in a specified direction so the question is why do tracks formed by beta particles, why are they usually thin? So they are thin as compared to alpha particles because beta particles are lighter and move faster, causing less ionization of the air molecule. And like for the case of alpha tracks, of course, we know that alpha particles, they are usually uh, massive and of course they move slower. Therefore, they cause uh, higher ionization of the air molecules on their way. Then the other question is, why are tracks formed by beta particles generally irregular in direction as compared to those of alpha particles? So the, the reason is because beta particles are repelled by electrons of atoms within their path. Remember that our beta particles are usually represented by electrons, meaning that they are usually negatively charged. Then, of course, we have ionized air, of course, which has been ionized by the radiations 
are coming from this particular radioactive source. So when air is actually ionized, some of its molecules will be negatively charged, whereas the others will be positively charged. So the molecules which are negatively charged, they are going to repel these particular beta particles because remember uh, from the law of charges, we said that like charges will always repel each other. Therefore, uh, the negatively charged ions of air are going to repel these particular beta particles. Of course, when they are repelled, that is why their path will not be straight uh, because they are being repelled on their way by the negatively charged uh, ions of that particular air. Remember for the case of alpha particle, the charge does not affect the, the, the path of the alpha particles because alpha particles are usually very massive and of course they cause higher ionization unlike the beta particles which are very thin and of course they cause they also they are usually very light and of course they move faster causing less ionization so their path will always be distracted by the negatively charged uh, air molecules which are which will be repelling this particular lighter light uh, particles beta particles which are moving at a very very high speed so the track due to beta particles of course are as shown in this particular diagram here then lastly we look at gamma tracks whereby we are saying that gamma rays produce scanty disjointed tracks remember that gamma rays have no charge therefore they do not ionize air so the rays eject electrons from their molecules then these electrons behave like weak beta particles because remember beta particles are essentially electrons that is why we represent beta particles with an electron then of course which are responsible for the scanty disjointed uh, tracks as shown in this particular diagram then we have some two points to note concerning the diffusion cloud chamber of course which had uh, alcohol in its upper uh, compartment then of course it had dry ice in the lower compartment so we want to look at the functions of uh, the alcohol and dry ice in a diffusion cloud chamber so the alcohol produces alcohol vapor which condenses on air ions to show trails of uh, the radiation path then of course the dry ice also called the solid carbon dioxide cools the alcohol vapor below the condensation temperature because remember dry ice or the solid carbon dioxide is usually at negative 78 degrees celsius then lastly we look at the advantage of a diffusion cloud chamber detector over a charged electroscope whereby we are saying that a diffusion cloud chamber can detect alpha beta and gamma rays or radiations unlike a charged electroscope which can only detect alpha particles so remember a charged electroscope can only detect alpha particles because alpha particles have high ionizing power unlike beta and gamma rays which have um, very little ionizing power therefore they may not be detected by uh, a charged electroscope so we've come to the end of our class today but we need to discuss the quote of the day the quote of the day stated that competition against others creates bitterness but competition against yourself creates better men. So the quote is warning us against competing and comparing ourselves to others. This is because negative competition and negative comparison will demoralize you from pushing yourself to the limits of your potential. Therefore, every time you compete and compare yourself to others, always remember to apply context because you could be comparing your first step to someone else 10th or 20th or 100th step. So, stop beating yourself up. You are you are work in progress. You can still get there step by step. So be patient. And lastly recall that no one was born being good at anything. It takes hard work, dedication, patience, and willingness to learn from the experts. Thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson. I do not take it for granted. In case you are new to the channel, kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you will get notified. Until next time, this is Kind Tuition Academy. Thank you very much.